As some of you may know, I come from Serbia, which is in the Balkan Peninsula, that's right. And uh, the folk music over there is rich, very rich with um, odd meters and uh, melodies that don't quite sound like Western music. And all that stuff has uh, had a great deal of influence on my playing, on my composing, etc. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to play a bass line, or I should say, well, a reduction of a song of mine that I play with my band Sveti. And um, we're going to go through a time change. Basically, the thing is, actually, I'm, I'm going to keep the time signature a secret, and I'll try to get some audience participation in terms of figuring it out. But then I'll go into explaining a little bit of what I do with it. Um, basically, we'll play the bass line for it. We'll go into the B section, which is in 3-4. That's not going to be a mystery. And then I'm going to play a little solo over it, and we'll end it. Then we'll uh, talk a little bit. So the song is called Celebration. Signature? Yes. No. What, what was it? Oh, close, but not quite. Nine, Nine what? Four. Nine, eight. Nine eight is almost right because it is true that. Um, well, let me let me let me see if somebody has the the exact answer. Nine eight is. There we go, and the winner is Tobias Ralph, my ex roommate. Get up, get up, and, and there you go. Wonderful, wonderful drummer in his own right, Mr. Tobias Ralph, sitting here in the front row supporting me. A big applause, please. Tobias, stand up. Let him know who you are. Awesome. 1816, why not 98? Well, if you listen to the bass line, the bass line really um, is, is very chopped up in bits of 16th notes, like groups of two and three, but 16th notey groups, not, um, 
not eighth note. So basically the bass line. It's kind of hard to, to sing and, and, and do this, but essentially. So one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one. So basically the music here determines the time signature. Nine eight is correct because the music fits in that same mold. I mean, nine eighth notes do go by, but determining a time signature has, for me, much more to do with um, the subdivisions of the music itself than just the time that we pass between uh, each downbeat. Um, now, one thing that I wanna uh, tell you guys is uh, just the way that I've come to be able to manipulate this kind of a rhythm and uh, uh, move inside and outside of it, um, as you know, as opposed to just having to play only with the bass line and have the whole drumming come down to just mimicking or imitating the bass line, which is really how I started when I started playing these things. I would just, you know, kind of strap onto the bass line and try to just make sure that I'm playing just that, which is, there's nothing wrong with it if you're in a situation where you quickly need to, uh, need to play something and uh, you don't want to make it a uh, be doubtful and the best thing is to really hook into the uh, man's best friend which is the bass player and uh, and make sure that uh, what you're playing hooks in with him but for some more interactive and improvisational stuff you want to be able to move things around a little bit so the the simplest way for me to explain what happens is uh, if I just take 16 notes themselves and um, play different groupings of 16 notes while I'm singing the bass line to myself this is really the way that I've found best to uh, get myself free from just having to play exactly that. So if the bass line's do 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 for example I was playing a five note sticking so sixteen notes so basically I'm able to play a grouping that overlaps the bass line while I'm still completely conscious of the bass line. Like with that, I can do groupings of three. Or groupings of four. Basically, I'm using very simple stickings. Like for three, I'm using one right and two left. For four, I'm just using a double stroke. For five, I'm using a right, left, right, and then two left. Basically something that's very comfortable, and through that, I'm managing to do two things. I'm still keeping track of the bass line and the underlying context of the song, but with my hands, I'm able to move things around rhythmically. So if I do that, and then move it to the drum set, and even have a bass player play the line so I don't have to sing it into a mic, it sounds a little bit like this. notes anymore now you enter you know that's basically what I explained was playing within the same subdivision so 16 notes are the dominant subdivision in the group I was manipulating 16 notes but that would even get old after a while the next step is to start moving around all the other stuff like uh, all the polyrhythmic things like uh, groupings over one beat two beats three beats and uh, and then create from there and then ultimately and I'll get back to this topic again trying to kind of connect all of this into one full story. Um, ultimately, um, the thing you should be thinking about once you get your freedom uh, in, uh, in these things, in both the subdivisions that the tune is in and the subdivisions that are, that are sort of outside of the regular realm, um, the freedom doesn't come without obligation. I mean, just to play stuff, to play stuff is not the point. The point is to still create 
uh, on the drum set and to use the drum set as a melodic instrument. I mean, you hear me use the toms a whole lot while I play. It's not just because I have three toms, it's because uh, um, they offer three distinct sounds. Coupled with a bass drum, the snare drum, and all the cymbals, they create an ensemble that uh, is to be used as a musical instrument. Which brings me to another educational point. Very often when uh, people come into my lessons for the first time, I have them play something for me, which is, I'm sure, the same for every teacher. The reason I do that is to find out where they're at. But, uh, very often a young or an older drummer uh, goes across age lines or sex lines or any lines. You know, a drummer will sit down and uh, kind of play for a while, and it starts and it stops, and, and you know, he turns around and that's it. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe even they did something interesting technically, but usually there's no story there. There's nothing that connects the things they're playing, uh, in, in a majority of cases, not, not all the cases. But the point is that um, what should be instilled in, in a young or old drummer is that drums are a musical instrument, and that whenever we sit down to play, we have an obligation to create some music. And so what I'm talking about now, even though we're talking about subdivision, th things like that, ultimately the idea is to use all those tools to create something beautiful on the instrument.